your secrets if you really look at yourself you will be speechless what happened to being doctors and teachers what happened to being your brother's keeper nowadays kids more worried oh what's up y'all it's your boy mr band clap and we in the building with a brand new podcast y'all yeah i know it's been a minute i've been hella sick feeling a lot better now so i'm gonna go ahead and come to y'all with this new podcast y'all so today i'm gonna be talking about the underworld without all the spookism and all of the religious stuff added to it i'm just gonna explain what the underworld really is and i'm also gonna touch on the um goddesses urzuli freda and urzuli dantor and the light skin versus dark skin feud that's going on between our black women today also i'm going to talk about the difference between a thought and a divine whore yeah y'all heard that right so we got a lot to talk about y'all so let's get the show on the road Yo, they tell me heroes ain't considered as heroes until they last days pass braves won't be respected until they pass away it's sad to say after what started out as a castaway is happy pain knocking we back welcome to another band clap tv podcast y'all i've been wanting to do this podcast for a minute but for the past two or three days i haven't really had a voice like that i mean i'm still a little bit hoarse right now but i'm gonna just get through it because i really want to get this information out and like i said in the intro we got a lot to talk about so i'm gonna try not to make this podcast too long but i can't make no promises because you know you know how us gemini's are when we really start talking about stuff so getting right to it as many of you may know these past few months i've really been doing a lot of traveling doing show pro gigs and stage hand work and a lot of times when you're doing that type of work and you got your mind on your money and your money on your mind as the good brother Snoop Dogg says you tend to not only run your body to its limits but most of the times you really don't feel the effects of the wear and tear and the lack of nutrition or the lack of hydration or whatever you usually don't feel that type of effects until after you've done the gig and you went home and woke up feeling horrible (laughs) so that's what i kind of been going through but since i've been in this situation it kind of forces you to give your body that much needed time to rest and recharge and rejuvenate so while i've been in my quote-unquote hermit mode resting and trying to get over this cold that i got i've been doing a lot of meditating and as i've been meditating I've been getting a lot of spiritual messages and every time I get a spiritual message I do a podcast about it (laughs) that's the reason why it takes me so long to do podcasts because unless I really really have something on my heart to talk about I don't like gossiping or rambling those are the two things that I don't like watching and I don't like exuding that type of stuff and as you know the things that I like to do most is to take subjects that people deem evil or something that's quote unquote negative because it was something that was revered by us but due to the society that we live in that most people have conformed to that stuff is now deemed and I come around as the Alegba slash messenger that I am to shed some light on that stuff and put it to you in a more digestible level to where you can get the lesson from it instead of running away from it totally so when you talk about the underworld i mean just that word alone have some people just uh you know what i'm finna turn this video off i don't care what this dude gotta say if he's talking about that i'm out i mean that's just how some people are programmed and hardwired to do because words like underworld the shadow realm the shadow world those type of words were always deemed as something bad something that you shouldn't want to even involve yourself with when even when you look at the bible it tells you that everything came from the darkness and even in the story of jesus and i think i said this before when he died he had to go to hell in order to quote unquote rise again with all power 
and even in the Kabbalistic teachings they teach you that the underworld is actually the world to come which makes a lot of sense in ways because even when we go to the Bible again it talks about heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away and that makes a good topic of discussion because as you see in that Bible verse it didn't say heaven and hell will pass away because most people synonymize hell with the underworld so the Bible didn't say heaven and hell will pass away it said heaven and earth will pass away so that either means one earth is the Bible's depiction of hell or hell is indeed the world to come or the underworld is considered the world to come because it's in the dark it's hidden that's why you have these secret societies that deal with this hidden slash occult slash underworld knowledge because all the underworld is is an embodiment of the primal essence to put it in layman's terms the things that you just want to do automatically no matter how crazy it may be society wise or how outlandish it may be but it makes you happy now to somebody else it may seem like this person is crazy or this person is psychotic but in your mind you feel happy because you're doing the things that you primarily want to do that's considered underworldly acting in that aspect of yourself and even when you're talking about things that are positive and negative and brother panic talked about this and beautifully taught and explained this when he said that in all honesty being on this earth you need both polarities and just because something is positive don't always mean it's good just because something is negative that don't always mean that it's bad and that's one of the things that we really need to stop doing as people in general is to synonymize bad with negative and good with positive for example like I said before you had unprotected sex with a girl and you're not ready to be a father would you rather for that DNA test or that pregnancy test to be positive or would you rather it be negative you know you're a girl you've been out screwing a whole bunch of dudes or whatever and you just decide to go to the doctor and get a HIV test or a STD test would you rather that test say negative or would you rather it say positive so those examples alone just shows you that positive and negative are a type of polarity and just because it's positive don't mean that it's good all the time and going into the underworld dealing with the spirits called the Gede they deal with death as well as fertility and when you start talking about spirits like the Gede now you're getting into the voodoo aspect of the African spirituality Ooh, that dark voodoo Ooh. Oh, I done made a lot of other people leave <laughs> y'all don't like talking about that voodoo I swear <laughs> the reason why I feel like is because as a people mentally as well as spiritually we've been so far detached from our primal ancestral universal energy and power that seeing a glimpse of that again is scary and that's another reason why thinking about the underworld is just so it just sounds so evil because in the underworld there are no rules when it comes to morality there are no rules so when you hear people talking about do what thy wilt and stuff like that that's that's underworld talk that's occult language because when you deal with the underworld you deal with no filter no boundaries no rules no limitations you can just totally be yourself whatever whatever that is <laughs> you can just be yourself and for most people that's considered as chaos that's considered as chaotic but there's always a good in the bad if you want to put it like that because in the underworld that's where the real you is you can be your real true to the game self you don't have to worry about someone judging you you don't have to worry about having to put on a front because you don't want to show yourself you don't have to worry about hiding things you don't have to worry about keeping secrets you don't have to worry about putting on airs I mean it's just so many when you talk about no rules and no limitations to some people that's considered heaven <laughs> as crazy as that may sound but to some people that's considered paradise 
just being in a situation where you can just totally let your hair down and not have to worry about someone telling you that's wrong or someone telling you what you should and shouldn't do and stuff like that now on the flip side of that as well that dark energy also represents the divine feminine and i broke that down in a earlier podcast when i was talking about the woman's imprint and how a woman is hardwired to follow her primal instinct and i'm going to touch on that a little bit more in this podcast but that darkness aka that triple six triple goddess energy not only does it represent universal love it also represents unconditional love because i mean let's face it if you can truly love somebody that's at the bottom when they don't got nothing then loving them once they do come up and they do get those riches and they do go into the light that's gonna be a piece of cake and even though i'm going a little bit ahead i gotta make this point when you talk about women who deal with that underworld type of nature or aka the primal nature of a woman that's where you get the quote-unquote down ass chick from or the quote-unquote ride or die chick that chick where you can be at the bottom of your luck no money barely making it stuff like that and that chick will be down for you like in some cases if you gotta go and move that work but it's a huge risk because you already got two strikes and if you get one more you doing life that down ass chick she'll be like cookie on empire <laughs> take that charge for you or move it for you or whatever hide it in a bra you know how it goes <laughs> so getting back to that underworld energy even when you look at a baby and you analyze the way that child acts from zero years old to seven years old because people say that that's the most impressionable time of a child when they're from zero years old to seven years old but nobody really talks about why that is it's just that's just what everybody says and they just gauge by the kids behavior but i'm gonna break that down a little bit more so you hear these gospel songs talk about the world is not my home and i got spiritual parents and then i got earthly parents and all of that stuff but I don't think a lot of these singers and a lot of these people really know what they're talking about when they say this stuff like their soul knows what they're talking about but they really don't know what they're talking about so to break that down before you came to this plane called earth you knew what you wanted to be on this earth you knew why you wanted to come here on this earth and you also knew how long you wanted to stay here on earth before you make your departure back into this primal essence that we've all stemmed from now once you're on earth and your spirit and your soul gets encapsulated in this thing called a body on this plane now you have something called free will and with this free will depending on your soul is what's going to truly define what you tend to do with your quote unquote free will so that means that if you're a more younger soul deep down you feel like look I'm just finna be YOLO. <laughs> I'm finna just live it up. And if I don't do my life purpose in this lifetime, I got plenty other lifetimes to do it. So it's not really a rush like that to get it right in this particular lifetime. So with just that definition, you can look around you and tell who the younger souls are. And then you got the people with an old soul. Now, these old souls are people that's been around the block a few times and they learned their lesson and they either coming back around to teach people to try to tell them to get their act together or they had some loose ends aka some type of karmic debt or something like that that they need to come back to earth and, and get it right and then they can ascend and live their spiritual happiness whatever that is so people who got an old soul they tend to be a lot more wiser at a young age i mean you can be talking to this 15 year old and you feel like you're talking to a 50 year old man you're like damn like how can how can you understand this stuff and you're so young you know that's considered an old soul and then you have these souls that come in and they're kind of in the middle like they're not too young they're not too old and they're truly the magicians they can either be total geniuses or they can be totally reckless because they got so much of light and dark inside of them 
that the key for them to ascend will be to balance it out. So back to the example when I was talking about the baby, you wonder why that baby for those first seven years is so bad. Like you got the terrible twos and the terrible threes and all of this stuff. And you have to look at it in this position. These children, you included, came from a realm where anything goes, literally. See, when people think about death and they think about Baron Somdi, a.k.a. Baron Somzi, and they think about that energy, people are scared of that energy because people are scared of death. And not even just in a physical sense, because on a different way of looking at it, death is actually a form of freedom when you lay death to your old ways of thinking and you kill your old habits and you disintegrate your old ways of doing things and you just decide to just be free that new you that blossoms out of that and that energy deals with fertility and creativity that's where mama Brigitte comes in which she is the wife of Baron Sumney in the underworld so when you're raising that child from zero to seven years old aka you're assimilating them to the rules and the boundaries and teaching them the new limits that they now have in this world that we live in remember that these children even you came from a world where they had heavenly parents that literally let them be their true selves within this world it means that they pretty much just let them do whatever they want to do with no consequences and I feel like that if we all looked at children as that when it comes to raising them and teaching them quote unquote what's right from wrong in this plane it would be more teaching and more raising and less abusing the child because there's nothing wrong with discipline but I mean it's a limit you can't just be straight up abusing the child because now now you're talking about trauma that's something that that child is never going to forget and when you're trying to heal something spiritual with something physical it's never going to work it's going to get to the point where you're going to have to whoop that child harder and harder and more and more and more to get them to quote unquote act right and then it's going to get to a point where that little slap on the butt with a belt ain't going to do nothing to them because they're going to be used to that type of pain they're going to be used to that type of trauma then you have to amp it up you know some parents just slap their child in the face <laughs> or hit them with a shoe or something i mean I've heard horror stories. I'm, I'm glad my mom ain't never hit me with no shoe. <laughs> but I mean, in this world that we live in, that's what we have to deal with. So when we talk about the different aspects of love within the gay day, um, Haitian voodoo paradigm, you have these entities called the Urzulis. Now, as far as the religious aspect of it, um, I'm still learning about them. So the stuff that I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Urzulis are stuff that when I meditated, I got different revelations and I was able to tap into the source energy, not the religious aspect of it, but the source of it. And now I'm regurgitating that back to you all in the way that you all will understand it. Because a lot of people think that the light skinned black girl and the dark skinned black girl, all of that stuff came from Willie Lynch. Now, my, in modern terms, it did but the spirituality behind it has always been here even when you talk about Haitian voodoo with the Urzulis because you have Urzuli Freda which is considered as a beautiful light-skinned girl and then you have Urzuli Dantor which is considered the dark-skinned sister of Urzuli Freda and when I meditated and I really tapped into those energies it really really shed a lot of light on this dark skin and light skin situation that we have with our black women this is why i stress that getting into these meditations and going deep within it's very very necessary and it's very needed because it helps you understand a lot of shit i mean <laughs> so all my babalows and all of my um i don't know voodoo priests or whatever if i'm getting the religious aspect of these goddesses wrong forgive me but I'm just showing you the energy behind them because the energy signature that they left on earth is still, I'm not going to say it's plaguing, but it's still very prevalent in the black community, especially with our black women. And I feel like with this, 
maybe we'll be able to come together and not be so hostile against each other if we just sit back and take these gods and goddesses as source energy and take the spookism from it take the religion from it and just deal directly with the energy so when you talk about Urzuli Freda and Urzuli Dantor you're talking about the light-skinned black woman versus the dark-skinned black woman so let's start with the dark-skinned black woman so to describe Urzuli Dantor's energy imagine you got this beautiful girl I mean beautiful hair beautiful dark brown skin very good-hearted girl but this chick along with her sister were kind of raised in the ghetto you know had a single mom household mama doing all she can to keep food in the refrigerator and keep the lights on in the house but I mean it's a struggle but in that struggle this dark-skinned girl she really looks up to her mom she looks up to her mom because her mom is a strong black woman her mom is like a superwoman I mean the fact that she can take like five or six dollars and make a little something in the kitchen and feed her and her sister and make sure that they don't go to bed hungry now mind you even though the dark skinned girl and the light skinned girl got the same mom they got different dads the dark skinned girls dad he's barely in the picture because he was a street hustler drug dealer had to get it by any means necessary he was always strapped up but with that life it always came with negativity I mean her dad kept getting locked up all the time so he was hardly around but when he was around he provided the little money that he could from the drugs that he sold and the stuff that he hustled and it helped out so dark skinned girl she had love for her dad as far as she respected what he did too to bring money in the house but there was still a void there because since he was always locked up half the time that she was a child she never really bonded with her dad the way she bonded with her mom so it was it was a lot it was a little unbalanced there now the light-skinned girl on the other hand even though she stayed in the same house as her sister most of the time her dad was one of those little more well-to-do uppity type mulatto guys you know them type of dudes that once they get into that crowd of well-to-do white people they tend to quote-unquote forget where they came from but nonetheless he loved his daughter I mean he really really loved his daughter so the days where her dad wasn't on his business trips and stuff like that he would stop by and visit her pick her up she would stay with him on the weekends and the holidays and so several days out of the week she'll just be with her dad and she was a daddy's girl I mean anything that that light-skinned girl wanted daddy just gave to her so she built more of a bond with her dad than the dark-skinned girl was able to build with her dad so dark-skinned girl she really really had to struggle to get hers I mean she had to come up in the public school system I mean she got ridiculed a lot because of her dark skin a lot of times where she'll sit at home crying you know why me why me and then her mom will wipe her tears and tell her how much she's a strong black woman and that you're independent and you're beautiful but deep down that did scar her a little bit now this is the thing dark skinned black girl she pushed through and she persevered even though she went through a lot and she graduated from high school now she had a choice whether to go to college or not but she didn't really see herself as a doctor or a lawyer or somebody that wears business suits and sits at a desk for eight hours typing on a computer I mean she didn't really feel like that that was the type of life for her because I mean let's face it she hasn't really had that type of example coming up of somebody with that type of life so she like nah I'm just gonna get out here and get it because I gotta I gotta help my mom out so she went out 
got a regular job but see with that regular job she wasn't really making the type of money that she really needed to make so with her being around the crowd that she was in and the type of friends that she had she would see her friend who once she graduated she went straight to being a stripper man she would see her friend in louis bags and big ass mercedes trucks and all of this stuff and she like damn so you mean all i gotta do is just go to the club shake my ass for like an hour or so and leave out with all that money like that at one time and her friend was like yeah i mean that's the easiest and fastest way to make money so in secret without her mama knowing that's what she went out and did because even though she wanted to make sure that her mom was straight when it came to her she wanted to be independent out in these streets she didn't want to have to ask her mom for money or ask her sister for money she wanted to go out there and get it on her own and hustle so whatever hustle whatever she had to do that's what she did now since she was in the environment that she was in she attracted the guys not only that were in that environment but she attracted to her guys that reminded her of her dad because remember what I said earlier she really yearned for a bond with her dad but she really couldn't get that bond but she did respect his work ethic and she did respect the things that he did for the house so every guy that she ended up getting with were along those same lines as her dad now this is where I have to really lay rest to this age old question about why is it that a chick can have a good provider type of man that got a business and got a nice job and shower her with all these material things and all of that why this chick can have this good man and still cheat on him with Tyrone just because he has some Jordans and mainly because he could quote unquote put it down right and when I'm talking about this I'm not just talking about a specific race or not even a specific um, color shade of women because all women fall victim to this but I talk about black women more because when we talk about on a primal sense what does a woman in a primal sense look for in a man she looks for a a provider someone who can provide within any situation any means necessary he can provide Two, a protector someone who no matter what dangers come in the way of the girl and the children she never has to worry about him not being able to protect her and then three she's always looking for the best mate to procreate with so in that sense that's where you get the whole he got to be able to put it down right situation so in this society that we live in that's perpetrated by the world that we live in which is this illusionary form of existence created by white supremacy black women are fed lies at an early age through media through tv through instagram through social media all of these distracting things they're fed to synonymize robbing drug dealing and overall hustling as the trait of a man that can provide they synonymize a guy that got a gun with okay now he can protect me by any means necessary and they synonymize good physical sex with being an ideal mate to procreate with and these are the primal three traits that makes a man alpha in a woman's eyes now in this world aka matrix that we live in every ethnicity and every race has their own set of societies kind of like on insurgent where everybody had a certain class of people and if you didn't fall into that particular class you would be considered an insurgent or you would be considered a divergent and killed off and hunted down because the insurgents aka the souls who aren't necessarily old or young so they're balanced those souls are looked at as a threat to the matrix because they're not bound by these societal rules and when you talk about black society 
the society of us that's glorified the most is that stereotypical ghetto struggling to be free slave mentality coon sambo that type of society now on a spiritual sense when you're in a state of lack or when you're constantly struggling and you don't have a lot of energy put into the world meaning you got a felony so it ain't like you can get a job and get it that way you know maybe you couldn't stay up in class long enough to get good grades like you're a good student but maybe you had to do a lot of hustling outside of school so when you finally got to school you was tired and you couldn't really concentrate and you couldn't really make good grades to get a scholarship and go to college like all the other kids did so since you don't got a lot of energy in that aspect your energy is still in that primal i gotta survive for the fittest i gotta get it how i live it i gotta hustle till i get it by any means necessary as long as you're in that state of survival mentally and spiritually in most cases all of your spiritual energy is really going to be in the underworld which is the world to come which is what could be just like biggie he was like it was all a dream i used to read word up magazine salt and pepper and heavy d in the limousine you know imagining wondering what else is out there i know this can't be the end of life i know this can't be life you know living in the ghetto struggling always gotta watch my back always gotta stay strapped that's that primal energy which is the energy of the soul that's where you get soul music from and that's where you get soul you got soul that's where that comes from why do you think our best singers and our best innovators our best artists all come from some of the hardest lives some of the craziest backgrounds but they got the most soul i mean look at aretha franklin she was the queen of soul and that woman even in her 70s was still out singing a lot of these 2018 singers and i mean i'm still finding out the horrible stuff that happened to aretha franklin when she was a child and all of that i mean look at michael jackson arguably one of the greatest entertainers in history period like the king of pop one of the greatest musical innovators of my generation period and if you've seen the jackson's american dream you've witnessed on a small scale because i heard it was a lot of other crazy shit that happened with michael jackson as a kid but it just goes to show you that our soul and our true power is personified by our struggle and in our pain and suffering so as a woman especially as a black woman when they're looking for a man that's all they really care about can he provide for me can he protect me and can he put it down right most people like bernard and we're gonna say bernard is kind of like in the same situation as light-skinned girl's dad you know he got a career he's well off money wise but he's not an athlete or a rapper or one of those entertainment professions he actually has a firm doing something else but he's making a lot of money and he can provide and he can protect too but his protection is stuff like trust funds and investments and things that deal with keeping your money flowing so that you would never end up falling under business wise and where a lot of these bernards fail at is being able to put it down because when you really think about it it's not really his fault because one thing about having free will and having a choice it's another thing that comes with that and that's sacrifice so bernard in order for him to make good grades in school and make sure that he climbed up the corporate ladder as far as this illusionary world is concerned this world that runs by money and economics and all of this stuff that if the u.s dollar crashes tomorrow all of your quote-unquote protection and provisions would be gone down the drain bernard he had to sacrifice and hold in a lot of his primal instincts a lot of the primal ways about him that he used to have as a child because in the corporate world you really have to quote-unquote fit in into society into the world so while tyrone 
probably been having sex ever since he was able to get it up then had years and years and years of experience because i've heard stories like like steve the dean williams for example he was talking about how when he was a child he fucked his babysitter and it's not even just him a lot of i've been hearing a lot of stories you know from the quote-unquote tyrones and the marquis and <laughs> the those different type of people and i asked them you know what what made you into that explanation that these men learned the woman's true nature at an early age and they know deep down inside these women don't truly care about what type of job you got or what type of car you drive or all of that material stuff all they care about is can you get her nails done when she need it can you pop a nigga with that strap if he's sweating her too much and most importantly like my brother t pendale says can you knock them angles loose baby <laughs> and that's the explanation to why you see that even though bernard may have the better career and he may have the better overall successful life he'll never get more poom poom than tyrone even though tyrone might not even have a job he might be staying with his mom he might be splurging on her with his food stamp card at the end of the day spiritually that's what it's about those type of women who are into that energy that this dark-skinned woman that i'm talking about that's all they care about and as long as you can meet those simple needs they'll ride for you now there is a dark side to all of this too and Lil Wayne beautifully paints the perfect picture of what the dark side of all this can be with his Mona Lisa record so if you want to check that song out with him and Kendrick they killed that song but really listen to the lyrics that Wayne is talking about all right so this dark skinned girl she meets a lot of Tyrone's and she tries to have relationships with these Tyrone's because they remind her so much of her dad and she thinks that well if I couldn't get this type of bond with my dad maybe Tyrone can kind of give me a glimpse of what that bond would be like with me and my dad but see it's one thing that she fails to realize and that is sex and love are two totally different things and she learned that the hard way i mean she got into a lot of abusive relationships where her life was always in danger because these tyrones they don't know how to love either because i mean like snoop say we don't love them hoes so every time dark-skinned girl found out that tyrone was cheating on her it would end up in a violent fight she end up with scars all on her face from always having to fight dudes and stuff that she was with because she found out that they was cheating and all of this other stuff so it's like she's just stuck in this cycle doing the same thing over and over and over and i mean deep down inside she has a good heart and she is a rider but it's to her detriment because she don't know how to let go when it's time to let go now enough about her so now let's talk about the light-skinned girl so as i said before light-skinned girl she came up in the hood too but she wasn't really in the hood in the hood i mean she was there a few but since her and her dad was so close her dad had her with him most of the time so those few times when her and her sister would be together and she would hang around in the hood with her sister's friends she would see that her sister always kind of had this nasty attitude every time she came home and told her all of the extravagant shopping trips and extravagant adventures and all of these wonderful things that she was able to do with her dad all this fun she was able to have her and her dad she started to see that none of dark skinned girls friends really liked her like that not even her sister truly liked her like that not really because of who she was it's really just because number one she couldn't really relate to the things that light skinned girl was telling her 
because I mean she came up in the struggle she don't know nothing about no uh Hawaii and Bora Bora and you know all of this crazy stuff that light-skinned girl would come home and tell her so times when her sister wouldn't be at home she'll be sitting in the corner crying talking about why me why me why nobody like me I can't help my situation I can't help that my dad is still in my life and all of this stuff why me and then her mom comes in the room and tells her that it's not your fault and don't ever hold that against your sister because it's not your fault that she's treating you like that and it's not really her fault it's just that it's not really just something that everybody can relate to so don't think it's strange when you feel like a castaway with certain things but just remember that in your own right you're a queen and you're special in your own way so unlike her sister her dad paid for her to be in private school so she got the best education now let me make this clear light-skinned girl she worked her ass off to get where she got in life I mean she stayed in the books she wasn't out in them streets and she took care of her business you know she graduated with top honors got a scholarship went to college graduated there but it's one thing that spiritually was different between the light-skinned girl and the dark-skinned girl dark-skinned girl she grew up very very guarded emotionally because you know fucking around with all those tyrones she got fucked up mentally and emotionally a lot in her life so she's very guarded and it's really really hard to fall for her because you know not only that dark skinned girl is kind of depicted as this loud foul mouth she might be bad but she got this independent mindset because her whole life she had to get it on her own without a handout but on the contrary light skinned girl she learned from being with her dad and the people that she was around she learned that the more feminine and the more dainty and the more soft she acted she actually got more stuff out of not only her dad but she got more stuff out of the guys that would try to get with her now in the environment that light-skinned girl was in as far as the school environment and stuff like that all the guys that she was around were all well-to-do guys you know guys that are working on their master's degree you know guys that are working on getting their career getting their business being an entrepreneur guys that were driven in the worldly side in the business side and those guys had good backgrounds you know with a mom and dad in the household kind of like a jack and jill type situation so not only was she able to accumulate her own riches she never really wanted for anything because she always had guys who were just willing to just give her their everything because of the type of inviting spiritual energy that she carried with her so when light-skinned girl came home and she would have these talks with her sister like damn you know i don't see how it's so hard for you to find a man all you gotta do is get you a guy that's driven and got his own career got a business he can take care of you and provide for you and get you out of this hood and dark skinned girl would snap back at her sister like hell no I ain't trying to get no bum ass lame nigga with a suit and a damn briefcase somebody that if he quit his job or if the stocks go down or if his business go down tomorrow this nigga probably be somewhere curled up in a ball crying even though my nigga beat me all the time and all of that I bet you if my nigga and your nigga got in a fight my nigga would beat the shit out of your nigga and also that nigga looks so lame he probably not even last two minutes in bed these are the things that dark skinned girl is telling light skinned girl about her men but see the difference is even though those things may be true with light skinned girl she's so in tune with her body and she's so in tune with spirituality and tantra and things like that that if she did 
meet a guy who was career driven and had his stuff together but he was kind of lacking in the sexual department she was able to teach him some things and make him better and that alone is one of the reasons why she never had a shortage of men and I mean like well to do men around her because when light skinned girl grew up she became this very virtuous woman you know very clean woman she didn't like un she don't like unclean things around her I mean the only time that she would really get with a Tyrone would be kind of one of those reformed Tyrones <laughs> a Tyrone that's like man you know I didn't got out of jail and I didn't became a Muslim so I'm really trying to do something better with my life I'm trying to provide my kids a better life and it just seemed like all the women that I was fucking with before I got locked up they don't really like this new me you know they want me to be out there hustling and, and selling drugs and doing all this rah-rah shit but man I'm really trying to change my life and I'm trying to find a woman that's that's gonna motivate me and is gonna keep me on this new path that I'm trying to go those are the type of Tyrones that light-skinned girl finds herself getting with now this is the unfortunate part because neither of these girls can really keep a man and let me explain why dark skinned girl she can't keep a man because a either she's too controlling or b she's too much of a rider to her detriment so she's even a rider die even though he's beating her and constantly cheating on her and treats her like shit she's still gonna ride or die because she doesn't really know anything else and light skinned girl she can't keep a man because when she gets married and her marriage really really gets on the rocks and it gets to the point where she can sense that there's going to be some really really bad struggling going on she feels like look i'm better than this i don't have to take this i don't have to go through this struggling and i can be with a better man who can take care of me the way i need to be taken care of so she ends up divorcing all of her <laughs> all of her husbands so in this story of these archetypes because I'm not talking about dark skinned women for real and I'm not talking about light skinned women for real I'm talking about the archetype of the stereotype so let's get that straight first and foremost because I don't want people in the comment section talking about not all dark skinned women came up like that and not all light skinned women came up like this because I know nigga now the dark skinned woman and her archetype in most ways she would be considered as the thought now the light skinned woman the way she came up in her archetype she would be considered the divine whore now why is she considered a divine whore you may ask so with this I'm gonna do another video with hood mystic where I'm really gonna break down the spirituality behind sex and the divine whore because Brother Panic talked about this beautifully when he talked about how the words bitch and the word whore aren't quote unquote cuss words. You know, these were endearing terms for women that explain power, you know, and prowess um, within women. And when you talk about sex, sex is the oldest and the most powerful form of communication on the planet. I mean, you look at nature and you look at anything that has to do with creation, there's always some type of sex that's involved <laughs> all the way from bugs to animals to plants to humans to bacteria all of that so we know that communication is an exchange of information between one person and another person so spiritually when I say that sex is a form of communication what I'm really saying is that it's a sacred transfer of energy between you two now it's been proven that when a man and a woman have sex since women absorb energy and men give out energy the woman absorbs his essence when they have sex this is whether he has a condom on or off because we're not talking about the physical aspect of sex where you put a condom on to prevent you having a baby we're, we're, we're getting a little bit more deeper than that so spiritually when you have sex not only are you bonding or quote unquote soul tie but you're communicating you're giving your information and your essence to her and a little bit of her essence will be with you so imagine you have a chick like the dark skin girl who's had all of these 
energy transfers, essence transfers with 50, 60 different Tyrones. And now she has all of this energy from all of these low life individuals swimming all up inside of her. You talking about a damn walking toxic waste dump with a fat ass. <laughs> I mean, for real, spiritually, that's why they say the craziest women have the best poom poom, but they crazy as cat shit. And if you marry them, woo, I'm gonna say a little prayer for you. But as a spiritual being and as a man that cares about his spirit, he would really watch the type of women that he decided to have an energy exchange with. Because, I mean, honestly, what type of energy do you really think that you would get from a woman who's had sex with a bunch of Tyrones? And these Tyrones are just a bunch of stereotypical trap niggas. And then you wonder why after you had sex with that dot, bad shit just follows you for some reason. You're like, damn, like my car just got stolen. You know, my house just got broken into. Like, damn, like, man, I had some good sex, but damn, like all this bad stuff happened to me all of a sudden. That's because you've inherited that negative, that lower level energy. Now, on the flip side, look at that archetype of the light-skinned girl that I was telling you about. She's had sex with a bunch of Bernards. And not only did she have sex with them, she married them. It's just that in some way or another, the marriage didn't go right, but it didn't close off her heart. So you get with a woman like that, and the only guys that she's been with were millionaires, you know, business owners, CEOs, guys who had successful companies and ran successful enterprises. You don't think that if you pick that girl's brain and ask her different things, you don't think that if you really get in good with her, she won't share that information with you so you can be great as well. Not only that, you transfer an energy with her energetically, you're gonna inherit a lot of that energy of those millionaires and of those businessmen and stuff like that that she's dealt with in the past so you have a strange business idea out of nowhere you're like baby i just got this idea that i just want to start this restaurant you know this food truck or something then all of a sudden you see an ad in the paper a free food truck pick come pick it up or something it just things just just work out for you you're like damn like okay this what's up it's because You've inherited all of that positive energy that was wrapped around her. Now, neither of these women, like I say, can keep a man. But I'm talking about two polarities. The positive polarity, which is the light-skinned girl, a.k.a. Urzuli Freda. And I'm talking about the negative aspect, or the negative polarity, which is Urzuli Dantor, or a.k.a. the stereotypical dark-skinned girl. Now, dealing with their energies... You can learn a lot from Urzuli Freda, and you can learn a lot from Urzuli Dantor. Neither one of them are good or bad. It's just all about your perception. Somebody who grew up in an environment of struggling and pain and suffering, and you just need an entity that can protect you out there in them streets. Then you would call on Urzuli Dantor because she is a mother-like figure who will protect you or if you just need some success and if you just need for your business to get off the ground and or you just need some of that real real venus love like that real genuine unconditional love then you would work more with Arzuli freda because she deals with the good things in life she deals with the material things you know she deals with that fantasy of what if i had it all and dealing with her you can have it all when you're talking about that type of um, stuff so I just wanted to really really break that down and I know that this is a super super long podcast this is probably the longest podcast that I've ever done in the history of me doing podcasts but I'm gonna break these down probably into smaller videos but I just really wanted to shed a light on what the underworld really signifies or what it really means spiritually because physically and even in nature we know that in death comes life like when a plant dies it goes back into the ground and it creates 
fertilizing soil for the next plant to grow up healthy and strong. And you even have things like flies and dung beetles and vultures and buzzards who spend their life eating and breaking down things that are dead so that nature can use it and it'll create life to another plant or another bird or another animal or whatever. Same thing with the human. When our body goes into the ground and it breaks down and all of that, it creates fertilizing soil for plants and trees and all kind of stuff to grow from that. So it just lets you know as above, so below. Physically and spiritually, we all come from that same divine feminine place. And unfortunately, for some people, we all got to go back there. So I'm trying to get people out of the habit now of not being afraid of death and not being afraid of their dark magic, their black magic, because black magic is the black man's magic, the black woman magic, which is the most powerful thing on this earth that we could ever do to revolutionize ourselves and all of that secret information to do that is in the underworld. All right, y'all. So that's my podcast. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. I hope that you all got something out of that. I hope you all learned something. And if anyone wants to join me in doing the podcast or anything like that, email me. I'll put my contact information in the description of this video. As far as music, I'll definitely be bringing back the artist spotlight back because I definitely got some new music that I want to show off soon. And be looking out for the hood mystic video that me and him are going to do diving more into this information about the divine whore and the spirituality behind sex because let's face it these men today really think that they just know all about sex and women they think that they know all about sex and they think that tyrone is just that nigga until they meet a tantra master who can put them in 60,000 different positions and have them having 11, 12, 13 different types of orgasms and he not nut once. <laughs> it's that real shit right there, y'all. All right, y'all. So I'm out. Band Clap TV. Thank y'all for listening.